Please give us a brief bio. Sure. My name is Sertan Sultan. Um, I live in the United States, in Connecticut, uh, Avon, Connecticut. Uh, I was born in Turkey, Eskişehir, and um, I had my first elementary and high school education in Turkey. Um, and I had my also studio atelier training in Turkey, in Istanbul. And like approximately five or six years ago, I moved to the United States. Um, now I'm currently living here. When did you decide to become an artist? Well, since my childhood, since my elementary school days, I've been into art so much. And I was one of those kids, you know, who would be drawing all the time. I mean, if I need something, that would be always a pencil and a paper. Um, but, of course, during the high school, high school years, my focus shifted towards different things. But later on, um, when I graduated from my first university, um, I decided to pursue my passion for the arts. So I joined to a studio in Istanbul and I got my formal um, art education uh, in a studio setting. I was an apprentice to a very famous painter, um, Tema Rizayev, and he's a great painter, he's my teacher. And I studied with him, mostly influenced by Russian and um, Western European painters. What artists inspired you? What artists? Well, usually um, I don't have a specific artist. Back then, when as I grew up, I uh, I used to like different styles and different uh, artists and different artists' work. In the beginning, I was very much into Baroque style art. You know, the contrast, light and shadow, the dark backgrounds. So this was pretty much my thing. And later on, I um, discovered American illustration art, illustrative art. And one of my favorite painter is J.C. Leyendecker. His work, his attention to detail, and um, his communicating style with the audience is just amazing. It just mesmerized me. And um, I actually learned a lot studying his paintings, even though it is a totally different style from mine. Um, you know, his language just um, has been always very amazing to me. What mediums do you work with? I work with oils mostly. I also use um, pencils and charcoal for my sketches, uh, but mostly oils. And where do your ideas come from? My ideas, it's just, it's hard to explain this question, to answer this question. Um, it's like very spontaneous. It's when I look at someone, when I look at an event or anything, um, there's this spark. If I don't have that, I cannot start painting. Well, for me, painting is deeply emotional and personal. So, in each of my works, I strive to communicate um, the depth and uh, the strength of these emotions to the viewer. So, if I can catch those emotions in one subject, um, if that subject is communicating with me, I think the painting of that subject would also communicate with the viewer. Um, that's one of the biggest, uh, biggest aspects of uh, my paintings. So, when I'm choosing a subject, when I'm choosing a person to paint, I usually look for something interesting in them, their life story, their daily routine. I try to get to know to that person. And 
you know, not everybody is interested enough to be painted. So sometimes it is hard to tell people that I'm sorry, I cannot paint you. You know, I don't see that communication. Um, that is what I can call. You know, I can say that my ideas are coming from, you know, just one that little spark. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, tell us about your painting, Mrs. Serna. Mrs. Serna, that's um, that's an interesting story. I was invited uh, to a Thanksgiving dinner uh, last year, and that day, okay, I accepted the invitation, and that day I um, went down to New York, uh, and I grabbed some of my tools, some of my brushes, and some um, canvas boards with me, because in the meantime, that time I was in search of, you know, this um, interesting subject, and I kind of had a feeling I'm going to get something, I'm going to see something in New York. So when I arrived, you know, they welcomed me and everything is fine and I was quite tired so I just sat on the sofa and I was just relaxing and in the meantime, Mrs. Serna, Kathy, my dear friend, she was in the kitchen and getting ready for the Thanksgiving dinner and she was doing the last preparations and her image caught my eye in the corner of my eye, I'm looking in the kitchen and I'm looking at her hair rollers and she's sharpening a knife with another knife and she had the jersey on, everything. I was like, that's it. I have to paint that. So I just took the risk to uh, delay the festivities for the Thanksgiving dinner, but I asked her to post for me. She was in the beginning a little bit irritated because we didn't have so much time. So I had to do a quick sketch. Um, she posed, and I'm that painting to me uh, tells a, an entire day's story. It tells about the morning, it tells about the present, and it tells about what's about to happen. So I think this is um, a storytelling portrait. So this is what I'm looking for in my portraits. Um, and later on, I, uh, when I returned back to Connecticut, I worked on it for approximately two weeks. And yeah, um, that is um, how I painted Mrs. Serna. And do you think artists should work from photographs? That's a very common question. Should artists work from photographs? It is really hard to you know, tell someone what to do, what not to do. Artists should not transfer the photographs to uh, on their canvases. So that's the thing. But they can use photographs as references. In today's busy schedule and our busy routines, you know, when you meet with a sitter with a subject, they usually don't have time or patience to sit for you for hours. Uh, I also use, um, you know, some reference pictures to get their skin color and stuff, but I never transfer any uh, photograph on the canvas. To me, transferring a photograph exactly how it was on the picture photograph uh, to canvas is, is, is something um, a draftsman would do. It's uh, a control drawing like thing. You know, um, I don't know. It is really not an art. It is just a skill, let's say. Uh, you have to add your soul. You have to put yourself into it. So that is really, really important. That is why I think um, painters should not uh, use photographs as their ultimate source. Uh, they should usually start with a real subject, you know, sitting a, from a sitting, you know, that that is the right way to do. What did winning the BP Young Artist Award mean to you? Well, it meant um, a lot. I, I mean, it's a great honor to be recognized by uh, the National Portrait 
Gallery of London and BP. Um, and I really want to thank them because they m made my, um, you know, they m made my dream pretty much, you know, taking place in this competition and being exhibited in one of the most prestigious uh, galleries in the world. Uh, they made it a reality. So it is a great exposure, it's a great honor, and it's, I feel so so humbled by this experience because when you walk into the gallery you see all the talented artists and being in Final Four was a great thrill for me so I am really thankful. What would you tell artists that are just starting as advice? Well I would you know I am in no place to maybe uh, advise them anything but I could you know, uh, if uh, I believe some points um, would be helpful to mention. Um, if you are a young artist, it is really hard because you have your doubts and you have your you know problems and you know worries about the future because nobody wants to be a starving artist and this is one of the common things when you tell people that you are an artist, you know, they just give you that smile, oh, are you going to be a starving artist? So this should never stop you, and you should always pursue your passion for the arts, no matter what. You can do some another job maybe to, you know, um, earn some money um, to, you know, support yourself, but you should never and ever totally put your skills aside that it, that would be the biggest mistake. They should definitely be um, courageous. They should work on their skills, and they should follow the art world very closely. They should follow the competitions and stuff like that. So I think um, an artist should think about money as a secondary thing in the beginning. It will come naturally. So art first, um, put your heart and soul in it, and I guarantee you, you're going to excel at what you're doing.